every year is the beliefs are the same here that uh, if we're not playing on the last day in, of the CCBC, then it wasn't a good year. And that's the mindset that we have and, and hopefully continue that we're playing in the, on that last day. Welcome to episode 217 of Alberta Dugout Stories, the podcast. I'm Joe McFarland. The snow has started to thaw, and we're finally starting to see some local diamonds clearing up for the sweet sounds of the game we love this spring. Among the first teams to hit the field will be those in the Canadian College Baseball Conference, including the Prairie Baseball Academy Dogs, the University of Calgary Dinos, and the Edmonton Collegiate Hawks. Opening weekend is this weekend, and to get you set for the season, we've published the league's preview stories on our website, and we have a jam-packed episode this week, so let's get to it. Prairie Baseball Academy was one win away from winning the CCBC Championship last year, falling 5 nothing to Okanagan College. A perennial powerhouse, PBA won seven titles in a row between 2011 and 2017, but haven't captured one since. Head coach Todd Hubko would like to change that this year and thinks he has the team to do it. Todd, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Joe. Always appreciate it. Let's take a look back at last year, particularly one win away from taking a championship. When you look back on that season, how'd you feel it all went? You know, I hats off to Okanagan. They definitely had the best team in the CCBC last year. And, um, you know, right from the start to the end, they were the best team and um, they deserved to win. And I think we were a couple of guys away from being able to contend uh, with them and uh, you know last year was a crazy year for injuries with us at one time I think we had about four or five broken hands in the dugout and a and a blown out knee and of course that hurt us but for the most part Okanagan was definitely the most complete team in our league and I think we've done a really good job recruiting this year and um, you know really like our team I think we got some really good starting pitching and uh, really 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 strong infield and, and defensively we're really good and and you know, we put all the pieces into place here. I think we got a really good chance to, you know, to play in that final this year again. Looking back on it, you and I have talked about this previously, but what was it like trying to come back after a couple of years off like that and trying to get uh, a lot of those guys their feet under them, I guess, in terms of, you know, being able to play at the college level and, and play at a high college level in a short amount of time? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I still think we're battling that a little bit. I... Um, you know, you lose the aspect of sophomores that have been there, done that before, and that was last year. And, you know, even moving forward, it's just a, a matter of what, I'll speak on behalf of Prairie Baseball on, on what Prairie Baseball Academy is about. And, and you know, it's about development, but it's also about winning and playing the game the right way. And, um, you know, last year, I think there was a lot of times that, uh, that mentally and that we just weren't, ready to play at that level and um and you know and usually you put that on sophomores to make sure that the group is ready and um you know it's we're trying to build that again you know that to have that prairie baseball academy mentality and it's it's taking time and you know you get kids that are coming out of youth sport that had you know didn't play uh competitive baseball for a couple of years and uh and, you know and then they get to this level and it, it's different you know fall is fall at PBA is different than spring at PBA and, and every other, you know, college in, in North America. And, um, you know, it takes a little bit for freshmen to realize that it's, you know, it is a big jump from September till, you know, the start of our season in February and uh, just the competitiveness and how quick the game is and, uh, you know, things change. And, I you know, it's something that we got to keep building on and make sure that these kids are aware that they – uh, they have to keep growing uh, physically, mentally to, to play at the highest level they want to play at. And so it's been a struggle, but I, I think we're, we're getting close to back the way it used to be. But yeah, that darn COVID knocked the crap out of, you know, not just us, but a lot of, a lot of groups. So. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I've referred to in the, I'll call it the post COVID world is cadence, right? Like you go through a full year of, figuring out the terrain again and and in the baseball circles I assume it's the same thing you mentioned the difference between fall and spring it's this is the first full year where you can show a lot of these young kids the cadence of a year at PBA how integral is that going to be in terms of making sure that you are able to build off of the performance of last year 
yeah, you know, it, it's just, um, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, coaches need to change to the player. And, you know, I disagree with that. I, I think that's our problem with what we're doing right now in, in this world is, you know, kids aren't learning the, that, you know, to play at a high level. And it, it, it takes a certain person, you know, to do that. And it's, it's not always fun and it's not always done with a smile on your face and there has to be discipline and there has to be, you know, moments in the dugout or at practice or in our indoor that, you know, that uh, coaches need to speak their mind and, and be very frank about what they're talking about. And, and if the kids that can't do that are the ones that won't succeed, you know, on baseball and, and in life and, and, you know, the kids that listen and can take some criticism and discipline and, are the ones that'll that'll have success and it's 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 a little sad how how everything is approached these days and it's always it's always seems like it's the coach's fault when things go wrong and everything and it's never put on the players and and i respect that and i and i'll take that but it's also um you know these kids need to learn a certain way to play the game and um you know and if the ones that don't get it are the ones that don't succeed so kind of a two-way street that way i think and, and from that standpoint you got to look at it from a competitive standpoint as well for you as you look at the way that the ccbc has evolved over the years and you look at you know the improvements made in calgary the improvements made in, in edmonton last year it's a very competitive short but competitive uh season that the ccbc has how important is that mindset going to be in terms of talking to the guys in your room and saying if we don't keep on top of our game we're going to get uh the the other teams are going to get closer and closer to our our tails yeah you know I, it's ever since we've joined the ccbc and, and started this league it's you know yeah like we've always been near the top or on top and there's always teams that are chasing us and you know, it's it's very competitive, and, and the CCBC teams want to beat Prairie Baseball Academy, and, and they, you know, if, if we don't put our, you know, our best game on the field that, you know, years past, we were, we could get away with it, and, and we can't anymore. Like, it's, you have to, you know, every game is like a Game 7 World Series, and if you, you need to play your best, and if you don't, you're going to get caught, and, um, you know, and that's the mindset we have to have, that we... You know, we want to be first. We want to, we want to win our last game this year. And and if if we don't play to our ability, that you know, there's teams in this league now that can that can catch us for sure. So, you know, which is good. That's what it's about. And that's it's made the um, you know these other coaches and and teams have done a great job at recruiting and 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 getting more competitive. And it's exciting that you know every weekend is a battle and. Uh, you know, and we look forward to the next eight weeks of, of battling here. So, talk a little bit about the evolution of the CCBC because you've been around the game and around PBA for long enough now. You've been able to see the talent level. You mean we've got more teams involved, we've got more players involved. What's the talent level like when you look back from day one versus what you're seeing today? Yeah, I, I think in you know, there's always been some really good programs in the CCBC TRU. You know, was always strong. They always had, you know, um, you know, we were always battling them for for championships and and Okanagan. Um, you know, Jeff has done a really good job there uh, on creating a winning atmosphere. And you know, as you know, the early years with him too. It's with anything. It, it takes time to build a uh, a program, and and he's done a great job. And um, you know the other teams in our league too there's you know some infant teams in there that haven't been around very long but they have some real eager coaches that are to wanting to build something special and um i i find that the recruiting is a lot different than it used to be like there seems to be a lot more ccbc teams when i'm talking to a kid that you know there's a lot more teams involved in that kid mm-hmm. than, than just pba and and that's hats off to all the coaches in the ccbc for trying to make their programs bigger and better um, I also think that it's helped that, um, you know, that the league has changed from a four year that you can play in the league for four years that you can play in the league for five years now. And, um, you know, all the other teams in this league are, are five year programs where, you know, PBA, we, we keep our values the same and we, and we, um, you know, we're freshmen and sophomore and then move players on to, um, 
to U.S. schools or, or other Canadian schools, and, and that hasn't changed, but I just think it's made it a lot more competitive, too, that you're just getting that extra year for a lot of those kids to, to be competitive in the league. So. so let's look ahead to those eight weeks of battling here and looking at your roster, what you see now, what you've been able to see as you've played a few preseason games as well. What do you like about your squad? Uh, our starting pitching is very, very strong. Um, I think that, uh, you know, if they can give us six, seven innings a, a game, that, that we got a very good chance to uh, to win a lot of baseball games this year. I think we got a couple really good bullpen guys that, that can back that up on the back end, and um, and we'll hit. We always hit. Um, I'm excited about, you know, our offense too, but uh, definitely our pitching is, our starting pitching is very strong, and defensively too. But I, I think I said it last year, that's probably one of the best infields we put on, and, um, you know, if we can stay healthy again this year is – no different we're you know very strong on the infield and and the outfield too but just we're very athletic on the infield what kinds of things as you see the season progressing you've been through this a time or two what kinds of things are you going to be working on with the guys to make sure that they are staying on top of their game over the next eight weeks yeah you know the first first three three weeks here well sorry the next two weeks we just got off the bus this week we're down in Pendleton, oregon but the first two weeks you know we got to go out to vancouver island this weekend and the next weekend we're out in Kelowna, and, and you know it's just a matter of of making sure that that we're rested and and uh mentally and physically like it, it's a grind jumping on that bus every thursday or friday and you know the you know you're going 10 to 15 hours on a on a bus and um you know it's my younger years I might go like okay practice 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 no days off and I, and I know that these kids because of you know their academics too you can't do that and so we just got to make sure that we that we stay mentally and physically ready to go every weekend and you know we've busted our butts in the weight room you know th- throughout the winter and and conditioning that you know to be able to take a few days off to make sure that their their education's taken care of too and their bodies are healing is, is very important so I think it's just a mixture of making sure that you're healthy going into every weekend and, you know, not just physically, but mentally too. And, um, you know, it's tough. Like we got off the bus at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning and the kids got class in the morning. And um, of course we took yesterday off, but we're at it today again. And it's no different next weekend. We'll be getting off the bus probably eight or nine in the morning on Monday morning. So coming back from Vancouver Island. So it's, as they say, it's a grind, but, you know, who, I'd, I'd rather be grinding than not playing this game. And I think, our, you know, our players feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the importance of depth in a season like this. You talked about some of the injuries that you had last year. I mean, talk a little bit about being able to, to depend on those 20 through 30 guys to be able to make an impact when, when the going might get a little tougher. Yeah, you know, that's... You know, every team that has been very successful at PBA has always had that, you know, 20 to 26 guy that understands their roles and and makes sure that the guy in front of them is, is pushing themselves and, um, and ready for the opportunity to, you know, if something does happen that, you know, they can jump in and take over. And, um, you know, I, I, every great team we've had has always had those, those grinders at, at the back end that, you know, that aren't a starter on our team or, um, but you know, they come with the right mindset to make sure everyone in front of them is, is, you know, playing to their ability and pushing them. And, and, you know, last year we had a lot of injuries and, and our back end guys, they, they, they stepped up and, and filled the roles that we needed filling. And, um, you know, hopefully we don't have the injuries like we had last year. And, uh, but you know those guys are the guys that push the guys in front and they're very important to for to create a winning atmosphere and and to win the last game of the year so that experience is probably going to pay dividends as well or at least you're hoping it does uh coming up in the later on in the season as well right you've got guys who might have been rookies last year as i mentioned earlier they've been through the cadence they now know what to expect and and now have to play up to the moment yeah, it's you know basically where there was a lot of our guys because of the because of COVID like that was their first you know games of 
of college baseball were last year where, you know, they've been at PBA for a couple of years, but have never played in a spring game. So, um, you know, hopefully that experience and uh, that they had last year, you know, the kids that started and the ones that had to jump in and, um, you know, hopefully that helped and, and, and be able to build uh, moving forward here and, and winning that championship. Mm-hmm. Final question for you here, Todd. How excited are you to finally get things going and get the 2023 season underway? Yeah, you know what? It's been um, an awful winter, and I think that's been basically all over Canada this year. And, um, you know, hats off to our our kids here. We did a lot of work this week to get our field ready and shoveled off three feet of snow to do it. And, you know, our field is looking pretty good for the middle of March. Uh, I do feel that we're a couple weeks behind still just because of the crazy weather we've had. But... You know what, excited to get it going and, and find out how we stack up against everybody else uh, in the league. And uh, like I said earlier, I think if we play to our ability and and we got a really good chance to be playing in the final uh, at the end of the year. So um, hopefully we can do that. And that's what our goal is every year. That's one of our team goals is to win a championship. And uh, every year is, you know, the beliefs are the same here that uh, if we're not playing on the last day in, of the CCBC, then it's it wasn't a it wasn't a good year, and that's the mindset that we have, and and hopefully continue that we're playing in the on that last day. Uh, for anybody who might be complaining about having to remove snow, such as me, who has a corner lot, who's been uh, his arms are tired every time. All you need to do is see the work that they've been doing out at PBA in terms of removing the snow off that field on an ongoing basis. Because as Todd mentioned, it has been a brutal, brutal winter, but it is ending. Thank goodness for that. And looking forward to seeing PBA on the field again this year. Todd, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. Joe, it's always a pleasure. And again, appreciate everything you do for baseball in in alberta and and in western canada it's it's fun following you guys and uh you make it easy to keep updated on on all the baseball guys that are playing throughout uh the u.s and canada so much appreciated and uh hopefully run into you here at, at one of the games this spring It's been tough sledding for the University of Calgary Dinos over the last number of years. Having never eclipsed nine wins in a season, they are hoping for big things in 2022 under new coach and former player Cam Williams. They ended up finishing with a 17-15 record, but more importantly, some positive momentum heading into the future. Cam, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Joe. Really excited to be on again. It's been about a year since we last chatted, so let's talk about last season first and how did you feel about how things went uh i mean up and down season but you know overall uh you know we we had a really good year for the whole program honestly and, and ccbc competition include uh, obviously but as, as a program around the whole school year it was a, a lot a lot of steps in the right direction right uh with with off field you know fundraisers and all that kind of stuff and then just the attitude you know culture shift uh I, i'm really excited about where the direction of this program is taking us uh but, but last year was a big step in that. Uh, obviously, first time back on the field uh, plays a big part of that and, and seeing some success, uh, finishing third in the CCBC. Uh, but a, a big kudos has to go to our, our, our senior group last year. Uh, I mean, they battled through COVID. They We had some sixth-year guys that are finishing up school and all that kind of stuff, right? So uh, especially now that they're not – actually, a couple of them are coaching now in the program, but having them not involved in, in, on the player side – uh, actually, it was eye-opening to see how much they actually did behind the scenes uh, and, and, and with the player group. Uh, so, you know, kudos to them for bowing it through and, and being phenomenal leaders, too. <laughs> Guest appearance by the cat for those who can't Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a- always. Always. Uh, yeah. As you mentioned, big strides made third in CCBC. I know that you have dreams and goals and aspirations when you go hit the field. Did that result take you by surprise at all? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say by surprise, uh, you know, I, I think because we had that strong leadership group and we knew that and they hadn't run the field in two years, uh, even like a, before COVID, you know, we had that, I guess they would have been second years at the time and they were a really strong group, right? We're like, Hey, you know what? Like two or three years from now, you know, we might be pretty good, mm-hmm. but then obviously we just didn't get to play. So I don't know if it was necessarily a surprise per se. Um, as I mean, we, we started, we had a tough start to the year too, uh, going to PBA, to UFV, and to Edmonton, or sorry, not Edmonton, to, to OC, who are three of the top programs in our conference. 
Uh, so we had, we we started off like four and eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know we obviously needed to turn things around, and then we had a a key injury to Chris Cook, who was our starting second baseman and number four starter. So it seemed to kind of be spiraling downhill. But uh, you know, and to, to the guys' credit, they kind of pulled up their socks, and it was kind of a next man up mentality, right? So um, like I said, I wouldn't say it was a surprise, uh, but I, I was really happy with how we kind of flipped the switch at the halfway point. Mm-hmm. Uh, we weren't exactly where we wanted to be, and and uh, unfortunately, an injury. Uh, to one of our you know, top players and their key players anyways. And, you know, a few different guys kind of, uh, like I said, pulled up their socks and then, you know, d- d- took over, right? So, mm-hmm. um, which is why I'm really excited about moving forward here. On a personal level, first year as a coach at that program, obviously coming off the pandemic, so it was kind of like your third year randomly. But um, how did you feel about finally getting to hit the field and getting to really sort of, match yourself up against some of these guys coaches have been around a while and also some new guys like Jake up at Edmonton I know was was new as well but talk about um being able to finally sort of see yourself up against everybody else yeah I mean obviously it's it's a big part of the job right and uh you know I I had one year missed due to COVID I, I took over kind of halfway through um you know it's it's the, it's also the competitive side right like coach mm-hmm. I, I promise you coaches are super competitive too right <laughs> so uh, obviously we can't go out on, on the field and necessarily do it but uh you know uh it's it, it we all maybe a little bit of an ego thing right and you always want to you know have your program at the top and all that kind of stuff right so um and, and obviously being a younger guy and that may, i don't know if there was maybe questions around that or not that's uh, i guess out of my control but uh you know i was definitely really happy with how that season went and I think there was some hype around us because got some team program knew about that second year group mm-hmm. being fifth years now, um, and, and and you know the, the coaching change and all that kind of stuff, the culture shift. Obviously, in Canadian baseball, especially in the CCBC, you know words go around pretty quick. Uh, but uh, so it was good that we you know lived up to the hype a little bit. Uh, obviously, still some areas to improve, but uh, like I said, I mean overall, you know, like I said, it was. Our, by by far our best year in program history, right? Highest finish, most wins, um, that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really proud of that. Uh, you know, obviously, my, myself and the coaching staff have worked really hard, but also it's a reflection of how hard our players have worked too and bought into what we're trying to do here. Mm-hmm. Did you learn anything about yourself finally being able to hit the hit the field and be the coach that you wanted to be over the last couple of years kind of thing? Yeah, I, I think the, the big thing I I, I – had to learn over the CCBC season was uh, picking your spots, right? Mm-hmm. Like obviously it, it's, it's a short season, right? Like it's, I mean, how often is baseball defined in 32 games, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I mean, never really. Right. So it's a short season. So the intensity and, you know, the percentage that each game matters or each inning matters, or each out matters is higher. But at the same time, if you dwell too much on one game, then it might affect you're the future games, mm-hmm. right? So you don't want that either, right? So, but obviously there's certain situations or certain things that, you know, you need to uh, highlight a little more than others and all that kind of stuff, right? But obviously if you harp on the same things all the time, then your message isn't as clear and all that all that fun stuff. So I think just picking your spots of when to kind of, uh, you know, highlight things more, mm-hmm. right? And Or all the other times to maybe sweep it under the rug a little bit more, right? Mm-hmm. Just because you play four in a weekend. So if it's game one, it's probably more of a, sweep under the rug. We're going to talk about this later thing, right? right. Uh, you know, and, and, and that goes from on-field performance to off-field issues to umpires, all that kind of stuff, right? Just kind of picking your spots of when you can kind of get a little more fiery, I guess, and when you got to kind of sit back and learn, right? Mm-hmm. Now that we're eyes ahead to 2023, we're here, season's upon us. You've done some traveling already, as we mentioned. How has it gone so far and what are you seeing out of the group that you've got this year? Uh, it's been good. Um, like I mentioned, uh, we kind of went a little bit training camp style, right? So we brought a bit of an expanded roster down to Washington. Uh, and we, unfortunately this weekend, this past weekend with TRU got canceled due to weather, but the idea was we'd trim it down a little bit. And then for the final weekend, trim it down a little bit more and then end up with our, in our varsity and junior varsity rosters. Um, the decisions have been almost impossible, which is a good thing, right? The guy, the guys have been working really hard. Uh, you know, and I, I think that, uh, there's a lot of guys that do a lot of things really well and they kind of have their own little niches, right? Which is what you need. You need those kind of players on, on like every good team has those kind yeah. of players. Uh, but it makes it really hard to trim it down to 30. Right. Yeah. So, but they're all, they're all super competitive. Right. And they all uh, understand their role and, and what that they need to do that role for to have team success. Right. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, that's what I'm excited for. There's, you know, I, I said before, uh, you know, if, you, if everyone's trying to be the hero, right, you, you can't get to letter Z if you don't go through letters A to Y, right? So everyone wants to hit that walk-off double or whatever. But if the guys in front of you don't get on base or move a guy over, then there is no walk-off double, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, that, that's the example that, that we like to use, right, is that it's the pass the torch type of mentality, you know, get the runner over, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, it's funny, crazy things happen when people s stop caring about who gets the credit, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at this team uh, on paper right now and what you've seen out of them on the field so far, where do you see your strengths? Uh, I mean, our starters are really good. Uh, they, they were really good down in Washington. It's our starting pitching, I should say, right? Uh, you know, we have our, our numbers one and two, uh, Ethan Webster, Riley Young, we're, have both been awesome. Uh, I can't say enough things about them. Uh, on and off the field, right? They've been good leaders with that pitching staff as well. Um, and then from there, I mean, our our offense should should be a lot better this year. Uh, we were pretty. That's one thing about last year is our offense was on the younger side. We had an experienced pitching staff uh, with Jordan Smith and Ethan Bromley and Chris Cook, uh, but our our offense was a little bit younger. Uh, but like this year, we're of our starting nine and playoffs, we're returning eight of them, right? So. You know, I, I'm excited there that that experience in the CCBC tournament uh, and how, like I said, every out matters, right? Every mm -hmm. every pitch matters. And if you take one for granted, that could could be the ball game. And you never know which pitch it's going to be, right? So, you know, it's again trying to emphasize the importance of that and being locked in every pitch um, and just not taking that one job for granted, right? Mm -hmm. letter, letter J of that A to Z might be the reason why you win or lose a ball game and you won't know till the end of the game, right? I was going to say, how integral is that experience going to be like you got to finally see the top of the top and again you've gone a couple of years without getting to see ccbc playoff action now you you see that intensity rat, ratcheted up that kind of thing that group is going to be have that little experience behind their belt how integral do you think that's going to be in moving this program forward for 2023 it's going to be huge, right? Like, so we, unfortunately we were two and out last year in the tournament, uh, but both games we had leads into the seventh, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously there could be something to be said there, I guess, <laughs> right? But, uh, you know, uh, but it, it, it shows that we're, we're right there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're an inning or two away, you know, from being two and oh, let alone one and one, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think we're right there. And then the guys understand that, like, how, like I said, you know, how important those innings are so it's like you know everyone wants to be a starter everyone wants to be a closer well innings six and six to eight can be just as important right just ask the blue jays right yep. but uh <laughs> had to throw, that, throw uh, that one in there just had, had to throw it in heart. there but uh <laughs> but yeah it just goes to show right like if you sometimes you know like the, being a closer or being a starter yeah those are like nice titles but you know outs 18 through 23 can be just as important as outs 24 to 27 or one to six Right. So, you know, and, and, the, and we're trying to emphasize that mentality of, you know, if you get asked to pitch and, and no matter what role it is, you know, like it, it, it's huge. Right. And you, you have a job to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, whether it be we just scored a run and we need a shutdown inning or they've scored a couple already and we need to stop the bleeding. Right. Those are all those are both very important roles. Uh, and, and obviously they're a little bit opposite, but, you know, they're you see either way you, you, you need to do that job. Right. So um, but uh, yeah. I know uh, 32 game season, as mentioned, you need every situation is going to pan out over those 32 games. I, I, I hate calling it weaknesses because you don't necessarily want to out some of your players kind of thing. But where are some of the opportunities for your team? What kinds of things do you want to make sure you're continually working on as the season progresses? Uh, one thing that we always uh, stress on, the one thing that was an issue, maybe not an issue in the fall, but uh, just, just we're trying to use a, a clock in our – uh, ground ball practice as much as possible. I think young, younger athletes, uh, maybe maybe it's the arm strength isn't quite uh, as a big leaguer or whatever, but I find that oh, there's a lot of throwing errors because we rush, right? We don't, uh, that internal clock uh, isn't quite there yet. And it's also early, right? Like, right. I mean, we play a season March to May, right? So, whereas big leaguers are obviously February till October if they're lucky, right? So, um, I, I think that's the one thing is just understanding how much time you have on a baseball field, right? Mm -hmm. Uh and, and you know, not rushing yourself, right? Picking up your target. I know it sounds juvenile, but you know, simple, simple things that you, when you rush, you don't necessarily do. You don't get your legs under you, right? So just taking your time, right, and and understanding how much time you have on the baseball field is something that we've really been trying to do. So we'll do like twenty seven outs, and we'll bring we'll have a clock out, right, and for and for for the base runners, right? Even like a home to second, 
So you know if, if an outfielder has a chance to throw a guy out or at least hold him to a single, right? And and, and how that throw should be into the cutoff man, all that kind of stuff. It's stuff that we've been trying to work on as uh, the I guess internal clock um, kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. When you look at this team as a whole, if you can compare it to last year's team, where do you think it is? Um, it's close. I, I honestly think there's more talent. Uh, where it's a, it's younger though, right? So there might be a little bit maybe some headaches there a little bit, but uh, I, I think the talent is higher. Uh, I think our we got guys like p- pitching staff. We got guys with better stuff for sure. Um, it just just inexperience, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, if, if all goes well, and that's why the first 32 is going to be so, so critical is to get guys into situations that they're not used to being in, especially at the college level, um, you know, and that, that will help us in that, you know, conference tournament. Right. So, uh, like I said, I think if, if we can figure it out and we can get these guys that experience, I think we are a better baseball team for sure. Um, we can, we run a lot better. Definitely. Um, you know, I, I think we can handle the bat better. Um, so, but, uh, like I said, it's just the inexperience at this point in time, but, that's our job to, to figure out. Mm-hmm. Do you have any expectations of this group? I mean, there's always expectations, Joe. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I I, uh, I think we, we have a legit chance to, to make a run. I, I, I do. Um, I, I think that uh, we have the deepest roster for sure, right? Like, I mean, like I said, I know there's good teams around the league. I, I, I'm not arguing that by any means. But I think our 1 to 30 is, is just as good, if not better, than everybody else's. So... And when you get down to a tournament, right, especially, I mean, knock on wood, but, you know, if, if there is an injury, we have guys that are ready to step up, right? We, if we have, unfortunately, a guy who doesn't perform like he thought he would, we have guys ready to step up. Who, um, so that, that's why I think we're going to be solid as, you know, or like in a four-game weekend, giving a guy a game off, right, mm-hmm. will help him. You know, if he only gets, has to play 25 instead of all 32, you know, that will he'll be more fresh for the conference tournament, right? So that's the idea or even like you know piggyback our our starters one game if we if we're if you're able to right and have them fully rested for wednesday or thursday of you know championships right Mm -hmm. so that's where i think we have an advantage on a lot of teams is that i i trust you know our our top 30 for sure Mm -hmm. uh against anybody so is there sort of that any given sunday mentality that's creeping in to a certain extent given what you saw in that last year's tournament and that you were a couple of innings away kind of thing is that we got to make sure that we have to realize that any given sunday or any given game day or any given tournament we can do this it's just a matter of setting ourselves up for success at that particular point totally right like i think if if, if we're prepared and uh, take care of the baseball. I, I think we can beat anybody on a, on any day, like you said. I know that's the whole idea, right? But uh, like the thing is, is we we know that we can win, uh, and, we, and we know that we can we can compete and beat anybody. Uh, it's just the consistency of going out and do it, right? Like, well, we had games last year, uh, you know, where like it was, you know, a fr- Friday night starters, right? One v one, and some games where we didn't take care of the ball or or didn't have good situational hitting, and we lost by a run. And games where we did take care of that stuff and we won by a run, right? So um, I actually went that for our guys. I went through so we of the, of the thirty-two plus two, so thirty-four games. Uh, Twenty-two of those were two runs or less ball games. Wow, last year, right? So it was stressful. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like about two-thirds of our games were uh, determined by two runs on either side, right? So you know that's that's a hit mm-hmm. at the end of the day on either on on for us or for them, right? So. You know, and that's just being right there, and and but that 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 experience helps our us now, right? Of you know, we've had to play defense and throw strikes and put balls in play in those situations where maybe sometimes we failed and didn't, and we learned from it, and other times we did, and obviously you still learn from that, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I'm I'm excited. I think we'll be we'll we'll take care of the ball, baseball a lot better this year, uh, and 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 hopefully be on more of the positive end of those 22 uh two run games or Mm. less fantastic stuff final question for you you mentioned the word a little bit earlier on excitement how excited are you to finally get the season going here in the ccbc for 2023 uh i mean obviously really excited right so i mean you're inside for four or five months uh it it goes by so slow (laughs) especially after christmas uh it it, it just can't come soon enough so i know obviously we went down to washington last weekend uh and like the whole week before guys were buzzing you know talking about what the food close to the hotel and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, there's yeah, a lot of excitement. Obviously we had, uh, we only had 
the one, uh, you know, the one second team all-star last year, Nathan Webster. But I, I think there's a lot of guys that are, you know, in terms of the individual stuff that are really close and, and uh, you know, obviously they have individual goals, but also team goals as well. Right. So, um, but uh, no, I, I think we'll, I think we're going to make a big splash this year and, and continue in the right direction uh, that we started from last year. Fantastic stuff, Cam. Well, congratulations on the year that you had last year. Continued success this year. Looking forward to seeing you on the field again in 2023. And thanks for joining us here on the podcast. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Talk to you soon. Last but certainly not least, the Edmonton Collegiate Hawks got their first taste of the CCBC back in 2019, then had to wait until last season to see if they could grow the program further. They did, going 11-19 and before going on a bit of a run in the championships, picking up a pair of wins despite being short-staffed. Head coach Jake Lanferman is hoping for even bigger things with a full roster in 2023. Jake, thanks so much for joining us again here on the podcast. Thanks again for having me, Joe. How did you feel about last season, especially given that it seemed as though the team made some pretty big strides in the CCBC? Yeah, I was extremely uh, extremely happy with how we performed throughout the year. I think throughout the whole season, we kind of just kept gaining strides and then making strides towards uh, the end of the year that the CCBC conference came. And um, yeah, these guys really gelled. We meshed at the right time. Um, having, you know, having... The recruiting class we did, we, we didn't have a lot of depth. So I think we only had 20 players last year. We, we traveled 19 to that to the tournament and to uh, to knock out TRU, to knock out VIU, to go two and two and uh, have PBA on the ropes a little bit and then lose lose to them five seven. But uh, no, I think the season was was amazing. I think the guys played extremely hard, and it, for my first year, it was uh, it was awesome. What was key to getting the needle to move for that team? Because it had been a couple of years, then you got COVID. Like It would have been really easy, I think, to say, okay, we'll just take whatever we can get. But yet here you were flirting with 500 and making a name for yourselves during the conference playoffs there. I mean, that, that's a pretty big step in the right direction. Yeah, I think that, uh, well, obviously, I think uh, Ethan did a great job with the last program. And then, and then when the River Hawks organization, we decided to take over the college program. Um, obviously, yeah, getting the right guys in place. So last year, we had a great staff. Uh, Scott Gillespie helped. Uh, yeah, having Ray Brown there is awesome. And Nathan Coffin does a great job, too. So having those guys. And then I think, obviously, the start of the year, we, we have snow up here so late, right? So I think when we started to play these BC teams and we were traveling a lot last year, I think the more we played and then the more we kind of knocked the rust off, I think we, we just became more confident in our abilities. And then we saw a team kind of, yeah, I think that's exactly how it goes, right? You go into that last tournament and, and it's kind of whoever's hottest or whoever's playing, playing the best. And I think we kind of peaked at, at the right time. So we went into the tournament with a lot of uh, confidence in ourselves and, and these guys, I, I just got to kind of give it all to them. They they just matched. They played extremely hard baseball, and, and uh, it was fun to watch. On a personal level, last year was your first year as a coach of that program. How did you feel about how things went uh, from a managerial coaching perspective? Yeah, I, I well, that's kind of it. I You don't really know what to expect going into it and, and being a new team in, in the CCBC, but... Um, just proud is, is an understatement, to be honest with you. These guys, uh, you just work with them so long every single day for, for eight months, and, and you want nothing but the best for, for them and for this program. So um, to have uh, – obviously, it was a slow start. I don't think we, we didn't find our first win till till game six or seven when we went to, uh, to play Victoria. But um, as soon as uh, we started getting some wins and then the ball started rolling, it was, uh, it was just fun to be a part of and – and to watch these guys have uh, the success that they did, especially when um, they work so hard all year and, and they're dealing you know, with their their schooling on top of it. So, um, that, yeah, just very proud of the group. And um, yeah, we had a couple guys really kind of break out too. So you had you had Halen Knoll, who 70 Ks, he led this led the CCBC, and and at the same time he he hit 272, I think. So a guy like that to do it both ways for us was really um, the backbone, along with. Uh, RJ Bourget had a first team all conference year and, and Braden McKetty coming in as a freshman and, and making second team all conference. So we had some really great performances and those guys kind of led the way for, for the rest of the guys to, to hop on their back. Did you learn anything about yourself as a coach as you went through the season? 
Yeah, I think it's just uh, just understanding and reflecting as we went and then just trying to continue to try new things. I know we only had 20 guys, so there was a lot of instances where we're kind of playing flip up and we're trying to make new lineups and, and kind of bounce some guys in some places that we didn't really think they would be in at the start of the season. But um, as it went on, just yeah, reflecting, being patient, uh, kind of learning my group of guys and what they need to, to be encouraged in, in, in times when we weren't finding the most success. So um, I think throughout the whole season, it was just, it was awesome for me to learn definitely and, and just kind of pick up some pieces and put them all together at the end. One of the words that comes to mind is cadence, especially when you haven't had that full year to kind of understand the ebbs and flows, the 32 game season, you got the playoff rundown, like you've got all those things that happen in a really short amount of time. So the cadence is kind of tough to to figure out. Was that something that you got to learn and, and understand and maybe help bring you forward to 2023? Yeah, no, I think it's exactly it too. And and just speaking on that, I think our guys kind of learned at the same time, right, with the COVID year and us being a new program. I think we only had one or two guys who have seen playoffs before, or seen a full season of, of college baseball, whether that being down south and, and coming back or not. So, um, yeah, I think the whole year we just kind of rallied together and, and learning yeah, and, yeah, about our, our coaching staff and our, how our players perform and then just kind of, yeah, putting it all together and moving forward. Mm-hmm. Looking ahead now to this coming spring, you've seen your team in action a little bit so far. How has it gone as you've been getting yourselves ready for opening weekend? Yeah, we actually uh, we were fortunate enough that uh, we went down to Phoenix area. So we went down there. I think we played, ended up playing five games. We, we went uh three and two, I believe. And um, yeah, these guys are, we got a whole new dynamic this year. We got a lot of young guys. We got a lot of uh, talented freshmen coming in. They're, they're hungry. They want to make a mark in this league and, and uh, for themselves. So um, I'm really excited to, to, to see what we got this year and, and to chalk up against some of these uh, other really strong programs. I know they work as hard as we do too, but um, yeah, it's, it's getting exciting. Obviously, in a couple of weeks, we head down to uh, Chilliwack to play UFV, and there's still a good amount of snow up here. So I know these guys are itching to, to get back to some warmer weather and, and to, to start competing. What kind of team do you see this one being? I know that different teams have different identities. Where do you see this one stacking up? Yeah, I think that uh, really we just try and instill um, – just a hard nosed gritty type of baseball. I think that was my biggest thing that I tried to play when I was at UBC. We had that uh, mentality and, and if we're difficult to play against, that was kind of how we found our success last year. These guys just kind of um, make it difficult when we're in the box and compete hard when we're on the mound and, and put it all together. And if, uh, yeah, definitely last year having some coaches come up to me after series and just say, uh, yeah, we uh, we were a lot more difficult than they thought we were going to be, and, and uh, we got a good group of guys. So I think that's almost the key for us is just uh, to work extremely hard and, and let uh, successes kind of take care of themselves. At the end of the day, it's it's not really about our record. If, if, if these guys are getting better, they're becoming more knowledgeable at the game, and, and they just give everything they got. Might be a little bit early on in the process, but do you see any strengths early on for your squad? Um, yeah, I think that we're going to kind of rely on our bats. We, we, we swing it pretty well, and, and we found a lot of success kind of hidden down in Arizona as well. So I think one through nine, I think that's kind of the, the big thing about uh, this year is, is we have a lot more depth. We have a lot of guys that can kind of interchange in and out of lineups and, and still give us competitive ABs. So I think we're going to lean a little bit more on our offense this year, but uh, I think our pitchers will really – be competitive and give us a chance to win games too. Early on, do you see any weaknesses or maybe opportunities where you can see some guys needing to step up and maybe fill some gaps? Um, not necessarily. It's just whether, yeah, some of these young guys, it's just, yeah, college baseball can kind of get overwhelming at times. So we got a lot of uh, youth and, and uh, I trust my older guys and in, in keeping them steady and then allowing them to, to get comfortable and not overwhelm themselves. But uh, if there were any weaknesses, I, I guess that would be it. It's just, the, um, you know, with youth can, can go either way. So hopefully that they, they, they get hot early and they, they feel comfortable competing in, in the CCBC and, and then we just kind of snowball from there. But yeah, that would be it. 
when it comes to that youth movement and that youth and I'll call it lack of experience, but that that idea of gaining that experience, how much of it is going to be you leaning on your own previous playing experience to say, here's how you kind of navigate, or are you one of those people who wants them to experience them, experience it themselves? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I, I think a little bit of both. Um, a lot of our guys, we kind of work towards obviously um, – the mental aspect of baseball too so with me doing my master's in sports psychology we try and get these guys prepared with uh, mental pregame routines and, and performance area routines and these kind of things so if uh, they can kind of acknowledge that things aren't going their way or we're, we're battling with adversity then hey we can uh, put in these kind of routines and kind of uh, stop it as soon as it happens so I think that with the youth and with them obviously my playing experience and our staff is uh, very knowledgeable about the game so that helps these guys as well but hey if, if we're prepared for for these things to happen um, and we know how we're going to go about it I think that really helps this group. Mm-hmm. Do you have any expectations of this group for this season or are you kind of keeping it uh, open-ended right now? No obviously I think uh, I think we want to move in the right direction of just continuing to get better so um, I think we won 11 games last year and we finished fifth. So obviously we'd love to, to beat both of those markers and um, set ourselves up good for the, the conference tournament. Um, and then, yeah, no, that those are probably the main ones that we're, we're aiming to beat. And um, yeah, just to continue to grow and, and play good baseball. If you were to stack up last year's team versus this year's team, where do you see them stacking up against one another? I think this year's team, we just, the amount of depth we have with 34 guys instead of 20. So you see that this year we're going to have uh, just a bullpen that, that's ready to go. A lot of guys to call on and it's not as, as much uh, one or two guys leading the way as it is uh, next guy mentality kind of filling in where we can find success and putting guys in good situations to do so. I think the last year we just, we didn't have the depth that we needed to make a long postseason run. And, and uh, I think that really is going to be the deciding factor if these two teams are to match up. Especially in a situation where it's such a short season with 32 games plus your playoffs, it's it's not a marathon. It is a sprint. So how do you get the most out of all of those players in that short window of opportunity and time? Yeah, and I think that starts like the last couple of months here and just understanding that we got to build these pitchers up to be able to uh, compete at, at, at that level and build up the arm strength so that they're ready to go for such a short period. I mean, it is really yeah, 32 games in, in close to under two months. And then I know towards the end when these guys finish school, you're, we have, I, I want to say we have seven games in a week stretch almost because we play midweek and then we have the weekend with four games set. So um, it's a lot of baseball, and then uh, we play nines, full nines too. So it's a lot of opportunity for a lot of guys, but uh, I think they're they're rearing up, ready to go for it. When you look at that roster, who excites you the most about uh, whether it's their potential or what they what they've already brought to the table for you? Yeah, I think um, having RJ in, in the outfield last year, he had uh, an incredible year. Um, on both sides, he plays defensively really well too. So I think he's going to be the leader in that sense. I'm excited to watch Braden McKetty again. I think he's going to find a lot of success um, on the mound. Uh, Liam Fox is going to be one of our leaders pitching wise. We got uh, Reese Devlin is going to be good for us this year. Brendan Wabick, Zach Krukowicz. So we got uh, we got arms, we got depth, and uh, I'm really excited just to see these guys, just for them to compete on a daily basis. I think. Uh, just it's, it's long repetitive winter so we're ready to just get on the field final question for you 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 alluded to it as well how excited are you about heading onto the field finally uh in the next couple of weeks here yeah i think that these guys are just uh yeah they're we're, we're stacked that's the, to say the least so i'm um, excited for the snow to kind of melt out, out here so we can get on on remax but um yeah these guys are rearing to go and, and i'm excited to watch them we're certainly excited to watch you as well. Jake, really appreciate the time. Congratulations on the success from last year, continued success this year. Thank you again so much for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate it.
Thanks to Todd Hubka, Cam Williams, and Jake Lanferman for joining us this week, and thanks to all of you for downloading and listening. If you haven't already, leave us a rating and review on your podcast app and subscribe to help boost our prevalence on those platforms. A tip of the cap as well to our Platinum supporters for all they do for us and for baseball in Alberta. The Okotoks Dogs are hoping to repeat as WCBL champions in 2023. See more about their recruits and ticket information at dogsbaseball.ca. And AHP Academy is devoted to driven athletes. They'll be on the field in short order as well with new team names, the Renegades and Rustlers. Learn all about the program at ahpbaseball.com. Until next time, thank you for all your support online, on social and on air of Alberta Dugout Stories.